Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Robin. I'm in zone 6A in Northwest Connecticut. Really, I think we're zone 5, uh, 5B still um, because the, the weather here, we're in a little microclimate. We're on a hill um, and it's pretty high up. So one of the tr big chores I have today is deadheading some roses. I've really let them get away from me. Um, so we're going to get to that today. Also cutting back some salvia and some spireas. So one of the things with roses, uh, you want to cut roses back so you can keep them reblooming. Um, and there are several different types of roses. So you have your shrub roses that produce flowers on a uh, cluster of um, on one stem. So with those roses, you're going to cut back the ones that are, as they as they fade. You're going to cut back those blooms, and then you're going to um, when it's completely finished. You're going to then cut that entire cane down to a five leaf set facing out, not facing in because roses need good air circulation. You don't really want them. Um, you know, you don't you don't want your blossoms going inward and your branches going inward because then you're going to have less air circulation um, and then you end up with different kinds of diseases. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to work on today. Now, there are a lot of roses, shrub roses. Uh, there, there are a lot of different types of roses um, that don't need any deadheading. Um, some of the proven winners uh, roses like um, Oh So Easy Italian Ice. I have Oh So Easy Pink Cupcake uh, at last. The knockout roses, they don't actually need any deadheading. You just need to shape them if they need shaping if they need shaping. You know, sometimes roses have, you know, long, wild, runaway canes, um, and those, we, you know, we want to get rid of those just to keep things in a nice shape. But they don't need to be deadheaded in order to rebloom. Um, so we're going to look at uh, cutting back some uh, roses today. Like I said, the, the, there are a lot of dead, um, dead stems on. Now, the procedure is the same for the hybrid tea roses. Uh, those roses, um, only produce flowers on a single stem, as, as you probably know, but the procedure is the same. When the rose is finished, you're going to cut down back to a five-leaf outward, outward facing stem. Um, and if you need to, you might have to go down a couple of, a couple of leaf sets. Um, one, to keep it in shape, um, but just to find a five-leaf set. So that's the major goal for today. Then we're also going to, um, I cut back some salvias the other day with you guys, but I have a lot more to do. I'm also pulling uh, wild violets and wild phlox. Um, and I also have some spireas that really need dead ending because they just look nasty at this point. They've all, all bloomed. Uh, so we're going to work on that. Um, what else? Gardening. Uh, I, I've mentioned this before you kind of have to love gardening because at this time of the year, we're not really planting. Um, it's pretty hot. It's hard to keep things watered. Um, it's pretty dry here in Connecticut, not like you guys um, out West. So I, I totally understand that one, um, but it, it's dry here. So if you're planting, you really have to be on top of watering. I do have an irrigation system, but even that, I mean, we're, we're still hand watering plants. Um, if you've been watching my channel, you know I planted three large new beds this year. So those plants do need constant water um, just to keep, keep them alive. Plus I have dahlias that I've put in the ground recently. Those need water. Um, so it's, you know, every day you have these chores, whether it's weeding or watering or, you know, uh, cutting things back. There's always something to do with gardening. So I hope you love it as much as I do. Um, you know, I don't usually complain about all the work, you know, some days it's, it's, you know, hot and humid and we're sticky and sweaty. Um, but, uh, it's, it's a really fun when, you know, I walk out in the morning and I'm like, oh, wow, look that opened up. Wow. Look that opened up. Um, and I'm sure people get tired of my saying that, oh, wow, today's day lily is this, or, you know, this plant opened up or wow, the queen of the prairie finally opened. Uh, so I, going to keep trying to bring you along um, as the season progresses. If there's something you want me to talk about, um, please let me know. I've been gardening for a really long time. Um, and I, I want to say that a lot of the time, chores are very mundane. I'm 
not, I don't have a massive property like uh, Lauren Aaron from Garden Answer. So um, I'm not planting every day. Um, and a lot of the stuff is just everyday stuff that needs to be done in my garden and it probably needs to be done in your garden. So let's get deadheading. All right, let me get my gloves on. And all right, so you can see that this cluster, um, the, the roses are all gone on this cluster. So here's a three leaf, here's a five leaf. We're gonna take this down to this and we're gonna cut right there. Um, that's all that one needs. Here's, let's see if we can get this. We have, oh, we have a, a large branch right here. Um, that I'm going to cut back because it's completely out of shape with the rest of the rows. So let's, let's see if you can see that. And I'm going to go to a five leaf facing out. I'm going to cut that back. Let's see what we've got over here. Okay, so here's, this is pretty well gone. So normally you can see, all right, I just cut that one off because there's still buds on this one. So I'm not gonna cut this entire um, uh, leaf set off and I'm not gonna cut this back at this point. This looks like it's going to not be going anywhere. So I'm actually gonna take that back to this five leaf right under it. Okay. All right, here's another cluster. Same thing now. In this case, this first five leaf set is going inwards. So I'm going to go back to this one, which is facing out. Let's see. Oh, no, that's actually not a good one because that's on a different branch. We're going to go all the way down to here because that's the next one facing out. And it's as simple as that. Now, I do have some issues with black spot. I'm going to clean my um, clippers. I'm also going to clean up underneath this, and then I'm going to give this some rose tone. Now this is just your standard shrub rose. And again, you can see this is a blossom that's finished, but there's other blooms on there. So I'm going to just take and cut that one off. And let's see if we can get this one over here. Let me see if I can show you this one. Here's another one. We're going to get this up. Oh, this one is actually completely done. So we're going to cut this all the way back to that five set outward facing um, set of leaves. And we're going to do that for all the roses. This is oh so easy Italian ice. And again, this doesn't need to be deadheaded. Oh my goodness, we've got something going on here. Oh my goodness, the birds are going crazy. Um, so we're just going to cut this back for shape. We're just going to cut off the dead stuff. I just recently moved this guy, so it's looking a little tired. I've got some Atlast roses here also. And same thing. They don't need to be deadheaded. Um, since I just transplanted them, I'm going to just help them out a little bit and uh, give them a little bit of a haircut. Just like the shrub roses, this is a hybrid tea rose. This one is called Peace. Um, and we're gonna cut this back. It's just about finished blooming, so that's why I'm gonna show that to you. So you can see here's a three, a set of three leaves, but here's a set of five leaves. This is three leaves here. So we're gonna cut it back here. You can either do an angled cut or a straight cut. It doesn't really make a difference. People have uh, different um, preferences. So now we're on a five leaf set facing out. So it's the same procedure for all roses. Hopefully that explains that.
just want to make sure you can clearly see the five leaves. Again, you may have to cut back even farther, um, you know, just depending on if your rose needs um, some trimming um, or if you're starting to get a, you know, really wayward um, branch, you may want to uh, do a little bit of trimming. Let me kind of angle this up. So you can see like those branches over there are kind of taken off a little bit. So is this one. So if I wanted to even cut these back farther, I could go back even farther down to a five leaf coming out, not growing into the center. I'm not sure if you can see. So we've got a daylily in there. We've got a bunch of daylilies going to open there. And then we've got all that salvia and geranium roseanne behind that. Um, some nice big grasses. Uh, these are Shenandoah. So I've got a lot of salvia to cut here. So I need to get to it. This is salvia caradona, um, and I have quite a few of them in this bed. And they're past their first flush. Um, they're still blooming, but you can see this one is really gotten so top heavy that it's, it's splitting over. So just like we did last week, we're gonna cut these back to where the leaf canopy is. So let's get going with that, if I can avoid the bees. Now this time, I'm being a little more careful than I was last week. Um, these are older. They do have, they are sending out some new shoots. Um, and I have an event coming up in a week uh, in my garden for the Connecticut Daylily Society. Um, and they're coming for their annual picnic. So I would like this to be as pretty as it can be. So I'm gonna try to cut back to where I see um, some blooms some new new growth if not we're just gonna on some of this we're just gonna have to cut because it's pretty thick so again i'm just cutting back down to the leaf canopy um, or to an actual bud set that i can see and i may need to give this a little bit of support because um, it's really flopping over So we'll get to that, and there are a bunch of them here, so. And these are, like I said, these are old, so they're, they have a lot of growth. Uh, I've had them for years. Salvia is a great perennial. Uh, it really provides a lot of interest all season. And they're really easy to, to care for. Um, they're one of my favorites. Of course, you know, Nepeta is my favorite. Um, I also love daylilies. You gotta try and get weeds out of here. There's always weeds. I'm sure your yard is the same as mine. I'm always getting weeds. All right, so we've got some of this cleaned up. And I'm just going to keep on and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Let me actually show you something with salvia. So after the first stem comes up, usually you can cut that one and then you'll have branching stems. And you can see on this one, I did cut, cut it off but there's even another stem coming up. So if you don't want to cut the entire branch down, you can just cut in between those two and you'll have a new, a new uh, stem stalk coming up. Uh, you can do it either way. Just depends what kind of look you're going for and how long you've let your, um, your plant go. Um, in my case, these guys have kind of gone for a while, so even the side shoots have uh, 
done their thing. So I'm just cutting them down uh, and trying not to cut up the cut off the very new shoots that are growing there. I also want to show you, I have a lot of daylilies. I personally like to deadhead daylilies, and it's as simple as just, when they dry up, pull, pull this spent bloom off. I feel like it helps the plant keep its energy into the ones that are actually blooming. And since daylilies only bloom for a day, <laughs> might as well enjoy them while you can. So I'm not sure on another subject here, has anybody figured out for me what, what this clematis is? Because I did not plant this. Kind of found its way here, and I'd love to know what it is. This beauty is Shaka Zulu, and it was from a friend of mine. So again, even if they're not completely gone, I like to snap them off. So there's the spent bloom. And then the plant can work on actually putting its energy into the new blooms. And that's Shaka Zulu. This is so pretty. I love the, the purple with the, the white on the ruffle edges with the yellow green throat. Um, it looks really pretty in front of this Aurelia and in front of the Spireas. Let's talk plant companions for roses because um, sometimes roses can get a little bare on the bottom. So uh, one good thing is hydrangeas. This is uh, tough stuff. Looks like it could use some water. Um, that's one of the plants that you could consider using. Uh, also peonies. Now mine have already bloomed, but I have, let me see if I can get past the Spirea ogon here. Um, mine have already bloomed, but they provide nice support. Shrubs, don't forget shrubs. In this case, I have Again, like I said, Spirea, Spirea ogon. Another thing you can use is nine barks. So here's uh, some nine barks. Don't just think plants. So here's a rose that clearly I need to get to deadheading. And it's supported by daylilies. And on this side, some Becky daisies. So think both perennials and shrubs when you're looking for companions. Um, like I said, hydrangeas. Uh, lilies are another good one. Delphiniums, uh, thelictrum. Um, you could even pop a rose standard in uh, and it would get support from some of the things around it, some of the taller things. Um, you could have the rose up here and then your, your lower um, interest right below it. Uh, that would That way you wouldn't be covering uh, the rose. Uh, alliums are a good, good one. Here's this bed had a bunch of alliums in it. Um, I've left the seed heads and let's see if we can walk back to where uh, oh so easy Italian ice is and we can look at the alliums over there. So we've got a lily getting ready to open here. Let's let's go back there. Oh, I see a, a daylily. The daylilies are all starting to pop. Really nice, actually, before I walk past this, this beautiful collection right here. This is O'Lally Firecracker. I used to have a house in Vermont, and the O'Lally Daylily Farm was right near my house. 
So let's go look at some other companion. So here I have oh so easy Italian ice, and I have it surrounded with daylilies. Uh, I also have some, I have about a hundred alliums in here. I have some cone flowers. And right behind it here, I have an aster, uh, Raiden's favorite, that'll be a purple bloom and then some Hellenium. So I've got it all surrounded. There's some more in the middle there um, that I probably, let's see if I can show it to you without falling into the bed. Uh, there we go, right down there. So they, these are pretty well surrounded. <laughs> um, so they have lots of support and lots of pollinator attracting plants around them. A really nice companion for roses is uh, the hardy geraniums. This is Roseanne. Uh, hopefully you can see it. It's a little sunny, sorry. Um, and this is actually where I was just cutting that salvia. Um, we have some calla lilies and in that container right here, but I wanted to show you they, the nice thing with using geranium uh, to support the roses is almost the opposite situation. These get floppy. If you have this around a rose, you're going to have nice support for the geranium. Um, and it, so it, that makes a really nice companion. But the way it, it just winds itself, you can see here, it's growing up and around the daylilies that are in this bed. Let's see if I pull back a little bit. Growing around the daylilies and the yarrow and the salvias, the annual salvias in this bed. Uh, and also the nepeta, and I really need to pull some of this yarrow out of here because it's getting a little invasive. So there's some good option for you. Somebody asked me um, about irrigation. So we do have an irrigation system. Uh, frankly, irrigation is great for your lawn. It's not great for the plants. And unfortunately, I did not put in drip line when I first set up these beds. And at this point, I think it's probably more work than it's worth. Um, but it does require extra watering. So we have constructed these uh, hose stands uh, around, our, around our property so we can go water containers. You can see I have a calla lily right here. Um, that way, it makes it a little bit easier. Things that need that extra water at this time of the year, um, if it's really dry, we, we really need some extra watering. Um, so the lines are, my husband ran the lines under the ground to the different, different hoses. Um, and if you're looking for more information on how to do something like that, and these are just those, uh, you know, s collapsible type of, um, hoses. That way they're not heavy to carry them around. So if you want some more information on that, just, uh, drop me a line and I'll, uh, have him give you a fuller explanation. Hope that helps. I know um, a lot of people, a lot of people on YouTube talk about, you know, um, deadheading roses and taking care of, you know, cutting back plants. Um, so I'm just, an, I'm just someone else uh, who has a lot of yard work to do. I uh, thought I'd bring you along for some of this cleanup. Uh, looks like plants need some extra water. I do have a sprinkler system and I also have a hose link. Um, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with hose link. Um, this is not sponsored, so we have a hose link, um, which is pretty valuable um, in the space we have it in. I'll show you when we turn around. So here we have a hose link, um, and it's right next to this rose arbor, which also needs to be cut back. So just like I was just saying, here's a situation. This is new dawn rose, but it still has a bud because it grows in clusters. So I'm going to cut off the spent ones and then I'm going to, when this one is finished, then I'll cut the whole thing back. But right now it's looking beautiful and the clematis that are with it are really beautiful. Again, this is Elsa's bath. I love this. Great thing about roses, uh, they attract a lot of pollinators and this is something that I've talked about a lot. The other thing that you need to look at, uh, right now I'm starting to already find Japanese beetles. 
Uh, when you find them, the best thing you can do with them is pick them off and put them in soapy water um, or crush them because <laughs> um, they do do a lot of damage. I hope you'll take a minute and hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up if you like what, it, like what I'm talking about. Uh, the likes and the subscribe really make a difference. If you hit that notification bell on the right hand side, um, you'll know when I post a video, which is usually on Friday mornings. That's all for today. I'm gonna get back to uh, all my weeding and all that stuff. Hope, hopefully you can see the queen of the prairie behind me. Uh, it's starting to really blossom out and I'm still battling with voles, but I've been, uh, we're, we're trapping them now. So we're trying to catch them. Um, and we're just gonna keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> we're gonna keep our fingers crossed. Um, hope you have a great day. See you on the next video.